The opinions and interpretations expressed in this and other videos are that of Marty Huey and may not be representative of his colleagues and employer. The videos cover overlapping requirements of codes, standards, and regulations. Your situation will require full analysis beyond the concepts presented here. Door locations within a space and or room. I would suggest you review video number six to understand occupant load to where more than one door would be required. Most occupancies, once you reach 49 and above persons, two doors will be required. For storage, it's 29. For most I occupancies, it's around 10. And for H hazard, it is three persons will require more than one door exiting the space. Once this number is reached, the doors will have to swing out of the space in the direction of travel. The only occupancy that is slightly different is any hazard space. All doors, all doors shall swing in the direction of egress. So on a standard room with less than 49 persons, the door can swing in and you may only have one door. Once the occupant load is tripped, and in most occupancies, as stated, it's 49, you will need two doors. Now, the, this video is on where those two doors shall be located. Let's start off with non-sprinkled buildings and or non-sprinkled locations. Once we trip needing two doors, those doors shall be located not less than one half the diagonal distance apart or one half the overall longest length of the room apart. So D being the diagonal, one half divided by the diagonal distance equals X. So therefore, our two doors exiting out of the space with the doors swinging in the direction of travel shall not be less than one half the diagonal distance, or in other words, X. Now, sprinkled buildings. On sprinkled buildings, it is not one half, but one third. So you're given a slight advantage. So D divided by one third equals X. So therefore, our doors could be a little closer together. Let's physically do the math. On a building or a room that's 28 by 28, our diagonal distance is going to be right at 40 feet. So 1 half divided by 40 feet equals 20. So X, the distance between the two doors, shall be not less than 20 feet. On sprinkled buildings, let's take the same dimensions. 28 by 28, our diagonal distance is 40. So 1 third divided by 40 feet equals 13.3 feet. So therefore, our doors cannot be closer together than 13.3 feet. One point of note here. IBC considers the definition or the distance between doors is measured from center line of door to center line of door. NFPA measures from door frame to door frame, whichever is closest. So if you're needing to comply with both building codes, you will need to apply the most stringent of the two, which is most likely NFPA. Please post or email comments on what you've seen. Suggestions for future topics are also welcome. Marty enjoys learning from the experience of others. More videos will be added, which can be found at MartyHuey.com.